what you're about to watch is what is going on right now. So you need to be prepared spiritually and understand the times that we are living in. This is no time to joke around. This is the truth. It's a longer video. It's almost 20 minutes long, but I promise you it will shed some light on the things that are going on right now as we speak. Stay in prayer. Keep your eye on Abba Yahua, his word, and following King Yahushua, all while keeping your armor on. And don't get me wrong, this is not fear-mongering. This is just information to keep you aware of what is going on in the world today. One final note uh, is that I have taken these clips and kind of shortened them so that it's not a super long video, otherwise it would be over 20 minutes long. Um, and I cut it down to about 15 minutes or so, depending on how long this clip is. I'll probably cut that down. So just watch and be prepared because it looks like it's coming a lot sooner than expected. And yeah. So remember to keep your armor of Yahuwah on at all times, pray constantly no matter what, give praise to Abba Yahuwah and King Yahushua, and be prepared to be a warrior for King Yahushua because what they're doing is what they're doing. Just watch. The world is going through a digital transformation. Every time we use online services and connected devices, we create and exchange billions of pieces of data. By linking it with our digital identity, we can prove that it's ours, access it, and decide to share it or keep it private. The world's most advanced face recognition technology for user ID, password, and face recognition. Your face will be your digital identity. The airport, identify yourself with a facial scan at the security checkpoint. Quickly clear immigration as face recognition checks your identity against a government database. Scan your face to access your account and make withdrawals. And make payment with a quick facial scan. Scan your face to access and pay for different venues. Sophie shares her MDL with the officer. She doesn't need to touch it or handle it in any way to verify her information. Zeke heads off to the airport with two tickets, one for speeding and one for not wearing his corrective lenses. At security, Sophie uses her MDL as her ID. Sophie sails through. Zeke, however, is not so lucky. Hurry, Zeke. Don't worry. Sophie can save the day. With MDL, only she can access her license. Way more information that is needed for this transaction, whether he wants one or not. It's the future of identification. And believe me, you don't want to be the one without one. The United Nations is ready to digitally transform how it deals with identity. Introducing the UN Digital ID. All of your personal, HR, medical, travel, security, payroll and pension data in the palm of your hand. Digital wallet. Stored securely in her smartphone and only accessible to her with biometrics. She has immediate access to course certificates, travel clearances from UNDSS, medical records from allergies to vaccinations, UN digital IDs, a building block for digital cooperation, unlocking the promise of the SDGs. He connects to the government's digital ID application and enters his phone number. He then takes a selfie for a liveness check to prove he is who he claims to be. His identity is verified. Joey can now easily perform tasks using his digital ID in both physical and digital worlds. All righty. We are at McDonald's in the Big Fashion Mall. And here's what happens. When you want to place your order on this screen over here, the way it works is like this. You click English. And now it says 
In order to proceed with the order, you must confirm that you have a valid green certificate. It's of your own. So let's say you don't have one. You click don't have. Look at that. It blanks out the screen. So basically, if you don't have a green pass, they will not give you food at McDonald's in Beit Shemesh. <laughs> That's where we're at. Welcome to Israel 2022. Support our analysis on CBDC in particular for the use of general to the general use. Uh, we tend to establish the equivalence with cash, uh, and there is a huge difference there. Uh, for example, in cash, uh, we don't know, for example, who is using a $100 bill today. We don't know who is using a 1,000 peso bill today. Uh, a key difference in, with the CBDC is that central bank will have absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of that uh, expression of central bank liability. And also, we will have the technology to enforce that. Those, are, those two issues are extremely important, and that makes a huge difference with respect to what, uh, to what cash is. COVID-19 is an unprecedented health crisis. Current field testing solutions for the coronavirus don't connect seamlessly to a reliable and tamper-proof digital health pass, nor can they guarantee personal data protection. We need a more trustworthy, high-flow solution to validate people's health, given the interconnectedness of global travel and today's global economy. We could accelerate our return to normal life if we had a screen test that could be used anywhere, by anybody, securely and safely, seamlessly connected to a digital pass. Our mission is to build a new generation of digital biosensors to remotely diagnose and monitor patients. To do this, we exploit graphene's uniquely high electrical conductivity to detect biomolecules at a low level without needing the biomolecular signal to be amplified. We are introducing Grafiel's new product, Test and Pass, a digital biosensor for the antigenic detection of SARS-CoV-2, coupled to a standalone digital health pass on a free smartphone app. And here is mine. So everyone who is fully vaccinated or tested negative or has recovered from COVID can get one. And uh, we have right now 15 member states that have already signed up. And from the 1st of July, all 27 member states have to apply these EU digital certificates for the COVID. I am planning now to start my tour through 27 member states for the next generation EU, our um, recovery and resilient plan. And I'm very curious to test and to see how this certificate will work. Thank you. I, th I think there's going to be a lot of breakthroughs on the medical front, uh, particularly around the synthetic uh, mRNA. Uh, you can basically do anything with uh, synthetic uh, RNA, DNA. Um, it's, really, it's like a computer program. So, I mean, I think with enough, with, with, uh, with effort, that's not too crazy. You could probably stop aging, reverse it if you want. Um, uh, these are, you can basically do it. You can turn someone into a freaking butterfly if you want with the right DNA sequence. So, I mean, caterpillars do it. Describing a way to manipulate a lab animal's brain circuitry accurately enough to turn behaviors both on and off, to perfect a technique that will control the behavior by activating and deactivating neurons. Designer receptors exclusively activated by designer drugs. Dreads allow scientists to manipulate neurons without implanting anything in the brain. Current optogenetic experiments rely on extracting opsins, light-sensitive proteins, from plants which can be introduced to mammals by methods including injection and infection via adenovirus. You now say that you want to talk about, in this year's uh, conference in January, mastering the fourth industrial revolution. 
When we look at the world today, we see governments and even business very much engaged in mastering the crisis of today, um, very much absorbed by crisis management. But if you look into the future, there's so much going on in technology. It's a real revolution and uh, our life, the pattern of governing societies will be so much affected with what's going on in research, in innovation. And we are not sufficiently prepared for it. Just look at the discussion on big data. Yeah. It shows how how difficult it is to find the necessary rules, to find the necessary norms. And, and look at things like artificial intelligence. Exactly. And robots. Look yeah. at things like um, gene editing. Exactly. You know, opening a whole new horizon for medical science. And you see, the difference of this first uh, industrial revolution is it doesn't change what you are doing. It changes you. If you take a genetic editing, right. uh, just as an example, it's you who exactly. are changed. Yeah. And of yeah. course, this has a big impact yeah. on your identity. Yeah. And offers certain kinds of possibilities that have to be careful about you know yeah. when you began to when you began to do that kind of gene editing some people worry that you are changing what it means to be human that's the problem and yeah. uh, it, uh, of course the new uh, industrial revolution offers us many opportunities but it raises many fold questions on the ethical but even legal yeah. Uh, implications and we have to be prepared for it and that's what we want to do in Davos next year. If you look at all the challenges, we can speak about a multi-crisis, an economic, a political, a social, an ecological, an institutional crisis. But actually, what we have to confront is a deep, systemic and structural restructuring of our world. And this will take some time. And the world will look differently after we have gone through this transition process. Politically, the driving forces for this political transformation, of course, is the transition into a multipolar world, which has a tendency to make our world much more fragmented. And for this reason, events like this one, the G20, and so on, are the very important connectors to avoid a too great segmentation. So let's have a digital health certificate acknowledged by WHO if you have been vaccinated or tested properly, then you can move around. So for the next pandemic, instead of stopping the movement of the people 100%, which clogged the economy globally, you know, you can still provide some movement of the people. Indonesia has achieved, G20 country has agreed to have this digital certificate using WHO standard, and we will submit into the next 
the uh, World Health Assembly in Geneva as the revision to international health regulation. So hopefully for the next pandemic, we can still see some movement of the people, some movement of the goods, and movement of the economy.